up the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. And everybody ought to praise the Lord. The word of God says, I was glad when they said unto me to let us go into the house of the Lord. And I'm so glad today to be here in the house of the Lord with his people. But not just the people here in the building, but with you all in the cyber sanctuary that has stretched across to the entire world. We welcome you. We welcome you to the 82nd International Congress and invite you to join with us as we usher in the presence of God. This is the time to tune in and get what you need because he's showing up for you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can you stand on your feet in the sanctuary? Let's present ourselves before the Lord. Everyone in our online sanctuary, can you do me a favor and just like and share and comment and tell someone that our 82nd International Congress is live and we are getting ready to have church. Come on, can someone in our sanctuary just lift your hands, clap your hands, and begin to exhort and begin to praise the name of our God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. You are wonderful. This is the year of refuel and the year of discipleship. God, we ask you to come in this house even now. Dear God, anoint us afresh from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Come on, clap your hands. Open up your mouth in this sanctuary and give the God of your salvation some praise. Come on, open your mouth here. If God has been good to you, you ought to open your mouth and praise him. He's kept you. He has brought you here safely. And while we're here, we might as well give him glory. Give him the honor he's due. Give him praise unto his name. Come on, church of our Lord Jesus Christ. All online, come on, even right where you are. Open up your mouth and give him glory. He has healed you. He's delivered you. He has set you free. Come on, church. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Oh, God, we ask you to enter into this sanctuary. Anoint this place from the pulpit to the door. Hallelujah, God. We invite you to heal, to save, to deliver, to set free. Set this atmosphere there, God. Warm this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Anoint the praise team. Anoint the choir. Anoint the musicians. Anoint the speaker. Anoint the air of their God. Let someone say, what must I do to be saved? Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, hallelujah. Clap your hands in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he is worthy. Come on, don't stop, don't stop. Come on, it's beginning to feel a lot better in here. Come on, musicians. Come on, hallelujah. All on this side, come on and open up your mouth. God is worthy to be praised. I said God is worthy to be praised. Come on, listen, this is the last midday of our Congress. If you still need to get something, this is the time to get it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody just begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody just begin to call on the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to enter now. Hallelujah. Somebody just yell, save, heal, deliver, and set free. Come on, say, somebody say, save, heal, deliver, set free. Come on, somebody say, save, heal, deliver, set free. Come on, save, heal. Deliver, hallelujah, and set free, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture will be from Psalms 24. Psalms 24, we'll read our scripture. Hallelujah, it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, 
he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be he lifted up the everlasting door. I say that again. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be he lifted up the everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. As we receive our praise team. Glory. Who is the king of glory? Who is the king of glory? Did we come to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Somebody told me that he's the great I am. Somebody even told me that he's the Lion of Judah. But if I put it in my terms, he's the one that woke me up this morning. He's the one to put food on my table, shoes on my feet, clothes on my back. I've come to celebrate Jesus today. Did you come to celebrate Jesus? Our virtual audience, did you come to celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. This song says, God is great, and greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his name. Hallelujah. We come to have church. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, God is a good God. Yes, he is. Put those hands together. Oh, yes, Jesus.
come to stomp my feet? My feet. Anybody come to stomp your feet? Hey! I come to give them praise. Give praise. Let's have church. 
form of fashion. I know it's a production, but this is about Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just come to exalt him today because he's just that good. He's just that good. Anybody here feel like you deserve it? Do you deserve the Lord's goodness? His kindness? Even when I mess up, even when we make mistakes, I'm right here. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I'll exalt you. Yes. For you are my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. We come to lift you up, Lord. For you are our God. Oh, you are my God. Thank you, Jesus. I will exalt you. Hallelujah. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. are my God Jesus send your exalt send your exalt send your I will exalt thee. I will exalt thee. Come on and lift them up with us. I will exalt thee. what I like about it. He's my hiding place. My hiding place. My hiding place. My 
safe refuge. Thy safe refuge. A treasure, Lord. Thy treasure. You are. Lord. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll go through to the end of the earth. When you're in the valley, he's there. When you're in the mountaintop, he's there. I will not fear. Can we sing it one more time? Because you're with me, Jesus. He walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me I'm his own. He walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. In the secret place, he dwells with me. In the secret place, he dwells with me. When I'm on my knees, he's there with me. When I'm on my face, he's right there with me. When trouble comes, when trouble comes, when trouble comes, when trouble comes, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he's right there. Because you're Oh, I will. Give Jesus praise. I will not sin. I will not sin. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're with me, Jesus. hands together. Won't you give the Lord some praise? Come on, you can do better than that. Those of you who have connected with us, you should be praising God too. The Lord has been so kind and so gracious unto us. Have you been enjoying yourself? Have you been enjoying yourself? 
Amen. This is a time for giving. We're getting ready to plant seed uh, in this ministry, and we thank God for the leadership of Deacon Marquise Rose. Put your hands together for him. Wonderful leadership. He and his staff has been doing an awesome job, and for our ABYPU president, uh, Reverend Dr. Mark Parrott, God bless you. And to our music ministry, uh, let's give them a hand. Doing a wonderful job. Uh, we have been refueling this week, uh, and there's still room for more. Hallelujah. The word of God is going to go forth powerfully with demonstration uh, of his Holy Spirit. Uh, but we're going to give right now. I want you to prepare your hearts and minds to give. We can do it by cash app, dollar sign, cool J C. I see. Please indicate whether it's the general offering or the speaker's offering. Cash app. PayPal. PayPal.me slash iCongress. PayPal. Or you can do it by mail. International Congress. Post Office Box 976 Garner, North Carolina. 27529. Or you can write your check to uh, international Cool JC. International Cool JC. You can also do Give La Fly. International Congress. Are you ready to give? Are you ready to give? Those of you in the sanctuary, we've been giving all week. So I'm simply going to ask that you give your best offering. Uh, we're giving unto God. Cash, check, or credit card. You can do that here in this space. Stand with me. Those of you who are connected with us, squeeze your smartphone. We're getting ready to pray. Reach out towards your TV screen. We're getting ready to pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege, opportunity to give, to plant seed in this vineyard. Bless us as we plant, bring forth harvest, every gift, every giver. We ask that you would move on the hearts and minds of those who are connected with us today. We're giving by faith because we trust your word. Thank you in advance for all that you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give. Come on, clap your hands. And he gave me a robe of pure white. I am feasting on manna from him. Uh, that is why I'm happy. 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 That is why I'm happy, is why I'm happy tonight. I've got joy, joy. Come on and clap your hands. Oh, I gave him my old filthy garment. And he gave me a robe of pure white. I am feasting on manna from him. But that is why I'm happy.
Miller Jr. is a national evangelist, vision engineer, and 21st century ministry leader who is changing the world with an impactful message of deliverance, hope, and success. His powerful preaching style, uncanny leadership skills, strategic planning ability, visionary leadership, and business-based background are seamlessly sewn together to permit this ministry giant to succeed in any arena of life. Dillard is the pastor of Citadel of Deliverance in Memphis, Tennessee, one of the city's fastest growing churches. In November of 2018, he was consecrated as Bishop in the Church of God in Christ and appointed as prelate of the newly created Tennessee Metropolitan Jurisdiction. Bishop Dillard has an extensive background in engineering, administration, and management. He earned a BS degree in engineering from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and studied at Christian Brothers University, pursuing a Master of Science degree in engineering management. Bishop Dillard is married to his wife, Stephanie Dillard. They are the parents of three. Hallelujah. Can you clap your hands and give God praise all over this place and those who are sharing with us online on today? Oh, come on. If you know it's working out for your good, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a great praise. As a matter of fact, clap your hands like the devil's head is in between them and open up your mouth and give God all of the glory, all of the honor. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Come on, let's bless him. Let's bless him. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Dear Lord, today we thank you for this opportunity that you've afforded us once again to come into your presence. We thank you for these moments of inspiration, these moments that we have an opportunity to acknowledge your bigness, your godness, who you are. Because of you, who you are, we worship you this day. We ask God that you would anoint these lips of clay, let us speak as an oracle of Christ and not of ourselves. Hide us behind the glorious cross. Don't allow the people to see me, but only thee. Dear Lord, drop a Holy Ghost bomb in the midst of your people today. Show us your glory. We thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing. By faith, we clap our hands in advance for what you're about to do for your people in this place and those who are watching online. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you're my strength, and I'm also very thankful you're my redeemer. In Jesus' name, can you clap your hands one more time like the devil's head is in between them and give God praise? Will you do me a favor for those that are in the room and for those who are watching online, you can do this and type it in the chat area. But look at somebody and say, neighbor, tell him God is up to something and you're right in the middle of it. Now tell him something good is getting ready to happen to you right now. If you believe it, come on, let's praise the Lord one more time. I know, I know it's midday, I know that you perhaps had other things planned, but I sincerely believe that God is doing some amazing things for his people right now. And so why don't we make that testimony, that declaration, that affirmation one more time. And this time, lay your hand on yourself and say, God is up to something. And I'm right in the middle of it. Now shout something good is getting ready to happen to me right now. Now let's give God another praise for it. If you believe it's happening for you right now. Grace and peace, what a joy, honor, and privilege it is for us to be here. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions, they fail not, but they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, unto me. If you know God is faithful, come on, clap your hands one more time for our faithful God certainly give honor and deference to the leadership of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. Come on, let's celebrate our leadership, certainly to the presiding apostle and first lady, the apostle Dr. James and Mother Shirley Clark. Come on, y'all, let's love on our leaders. To the vice presider and apostle to the youth and mother, Apostle James and Mother Florence, may we honor and salute you on today. And also to the advisor to the youth and first lady, the bishop, Reginald Davis, and first lady, Charity Davis. Hallelujah. And also, we are so enamored and excited about 
uh, this gentleman that God has raised up to lead this Congress who is doing an absolutely amazing job. I'm so proud and so glad to be able to consider him a dear friend and brother, the 22nd International Congress President, the Deacon Marquise Rose. Let's praise God for him. We honor you, sir, and thank God for you and all of those who work along with you. To the International Sunday School Association Superintendent, the missionary Dolores Griffith, we honor you and salute you. And also to the International ABYPU, department under the leadership of the one and only the elder Mark Parrott. We honor you and salute you on today and to all of the bishops and pastors and all of those who have gathered in the name of the Lord. Amen. They used to sing a song when I was growing up that said, so glad I'm here. I'm here in Jesus name. Anybody glad to be here on today? And let me tell you how glad I am to be here. I'd rather be here than to be in the best hospital in town. I'd rather be here than to be in the best hospital in town. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the church of our Lord Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. And I don't know about anybody else, but I came to have church. Anybody came to have church in this place? Hallelujah. God bless you. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. I know we have other sessions and other activities this afternoon, but I'm certainly honored to be able to share and be with you, my brothers and sisters. St. Luke chapter 13, St. Luke chapter 13, and we'll begin by looking at verse 10. St. Luke chapter 13 and verse 10, if it's convenient for you out of reverence to the reading of the word of God, I'd ask that you would stand as we look into what the Lord would have us share on today. St. Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. And Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And Jesus laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight. Everybody say straight. She was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite. Do not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all of his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. God bless the hearers, readers, and doers of his most holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to look at verse 13 for a point of emphasis. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately, somebody shout immediately. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I want to talk to you this afternoon from the subject, things are straight now. I need you to look at somebody next to you and say, things are straight now. If you need God to straighten some things out and you need God to turn some things around and you believe that God has already done it, I need you to clap your hands and open up your mouth and say, straight. Hallelujah. Things are straight now. As we look here in St. Luke chapter 13, which obviously is a record of one of the miracles of Jesus, and when we consider the miracles of Jesus, the miracles in which he performed that are recorded in scripture, they are actually a distinguishing characteristic of his earthly ministry. As a matter of fact, when we think about miracles, not only in the time that Jesus performed them, but even in the Old Testament, we will find that the scripture records many miracles and many mighty acts. 
but the amount and the magnitude of the miracles of Jesus literally as should be set him apart from anybody else. And depending on how you count the miracles, there are at least 36 discrete, uh, distinct miracles that Jesus performed. The gospel writers give an account of Jesus performing miracles on 13 occasions and then take into account of uh, six other narratives of persons that Jesus performed miracles for. And so when you look at the 36 that Jesus performed in comparison to the miracles that you would discover in the Old Testament, you will see that Moses performed 27 miracles. Four uh, miracles were performed by Joshua. Elijah performed nine miracles and Elisha performed 17 miracles. But Jesus just did not perform more miracles. The miracles that Jesus performed were actually qualitatively different because Moses and Joshua and Elijah and Elisha had to perform miracles through a power source outside of themselves. But when Jesus worked miracles in scripture, he performed them by his own power. As a matter of fact, when you look in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Peter said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Somebody shout God was with him. Whether it was healing the sick or cleansing the lepers, casting out devils, providing food and drink, or rescuing his disciples on a stormy sea, Jesus, his ministry and his miracles, I submit to you today, were actually manifestations of grace. And so the miracles of Jesus are more than just individual powerful acts, but they are acts of grace. Not only that, but the miracles of Jesus are symbols and types that I believe reveal the full scope of Jesus Christ's identity as our Savior. They point to Jesus' divine nature and identity and actually foreshadows his greater saving work. Of course, as we look at the miracle of Jesus Christ, we can talk about how he opened up blinded eyes and unstopped deaf ears and gave strength to those who were lame. But I believe, brothers and sisters, that the greatest miracle is that Jesus Christ can redeem us from sin. Not only that, but he can change our hearts and not just heal our souls, our bodies rather, but he can heal our soul. He can strengthen and empower us and one day resurrect us from the dead. When we look at Jesus and all of the miracles that he performed, remember I said it's not just about receiving a revelation of the ability of Jesus. But I believe that there's something else that Jesus would have us know concerning him because it pointed toward Jesus Christ being the savior of the world. And so when we look at the various miracles that Jesus performed, you can see a message of salvation and a message of hope. And here we have in our text on today, one of those miracles that I believe that Jesus not only reveals to us of his ability to heal and to make whole, but something greater than that. There, there are many lessons that I believe we can take from the miracle as we have read in our text on today. We see where Jesus, first of all, is teaching in a synagogue. And while he is there, there is somebody in the, the congregation that catches Jesus' attention. They catch his attention not because of the clothes that they have on. They catch his attention not because of the money they perhaps had given in the offering. But Jesus' attention was grabbed by this woman's condition. That she was in church. And as St. Luke, Dr. Luke records it, the Bible said that she was bowed together. 
But what is interesting about her being bowed together at the same time while it talks about her physical condition, he also gives a spiritual revelation about the condition that the woman had. There was a spiritual condition that manifested in her physical body. The Bible says that when Jesus saw her, he saw that she had a spirit of infirmity that caused her, that spirit on her calls her to be bowed together. Can I say to you people of God, many times we miss deliverance, we miss miracles, we miss the hand of God at work because in as much as we see a physical manifestation, we miss the reality that we are fighting a spiritual battle. I wish I had a church in here today. What are you saying, brother preacher? The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I think we're living in an hour and a day that so many people are trying to gain intelligence and intellectual understanding of things that they see until they miss discerning that what they're really dealing with is a spirit. And when we don't deal with the spirit, and keep trying to treat and, and we keep trying to go after the physical manifestation we miss out on the root of it but I came today to tell somebody that God says I'm moving away from just treating your symptom I'm ready to get to the root of it because when you get to the root of it the thing that you see today you will not see anymore I wish I had about 20 people in the room and somebody online to type and shout it's over, it's over, it's over. Why? Because I have a revelation now. It's not just the sickness on my body, but could it be a spirit that is on me? The Bible says that this woman has this spirit of infirmity that caused her to bow together. Now, I, I want to push the fast forward button in the text because Dr. Luke also reveals something else about this woman. He calls her a daughter of Abraham. Now that's interesting that he would call her a daughter of Abraham. What do we know about a daughter of her being a daughter of Abraham? We consider Abraham to be the what? The father of faith. So we can actually say that this woman being a daughter of Abraham is a daughter of faith. What does that mean? She has, she has this ability to walk in the kind of faith that reflects her, her lineage and her heritage and her legacy. A legacy of faith. But Bishop, there was something strange about this woman being a daughter of faith that really was oxymoronic for me. It was, it was paradoxical for me because it says she's a daughter of faith whom Satan has bound. Can somebody tell me how you can be a person of faith but bound by Satan? That's interesting to me that this woman of God is not possessed by Satan, but she is oppressed by the enemy. I don't believe that any child of God, especially if you feel what the spirit of God can be possessed by demonic spirits, but don't fool yourself, the enemy can come against you. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. He didn't say that the gates of hell wouldn't come against you. He said they just wouldn't win. As a matter of fact, some of you need to be shouting right now because you know that's a reality in your own life. That there, everything that the enemy could try over the last few years in your life did not work. I need you to shout at somebody next to you and say, neighbor... Everything the devil tried, it didn't work. Hallelujah. I just heard the Holy Ghost change that up. You want to know why it didn't work? Because it could not work. Because I got power you can't see. God is living inside me. I can conquer any enemy because God in me makes the majority. Even though the enemy cannot prevail against me, doesn't mean he cannot come against me. She is a daughter of faith but she is bound by Satan wow make that make sense for us 
She's a daughter of faith, but she is bound by Satan. So that tells me that we are not exempt from attack. We are not exempt from adversity. We are not, uh, we are not exempt from the enemy coming against us. But this is the next thing that I love about this daughter of faith. Watch this. She's a daughter of faith, but she is faithful. Because there are a lot of people who say they have faith, but they're not faithful. As a matter of fact, when you read in scripture many times, we miss the context of the text because we don't look at the original meaning of the word as we would read it in the King James Version. When you even look at the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter 5, that word faith is actual, actually faithfulness. So in other words, one of the fruit of the spirit attributes of the Holy Spirit is faithfulness. And faithfulness is not just about showing up. But faithfulness is about obedience and doing what God said. I wish I had a witness in here. That's why we have a whole lot of people who say they have faith, but they're broke, busted, and disgusted. They say they have faith, but they are depressed. They say they have faith, but you can't find them at 12 noon in broad daylight with a flashlight. They say they have faith, but they're not faithful. They're not committed. They're not dedicated. They're not there. Because when you have faith, hallelujah, show me your works by your faith because works faith without works is dead in other words faithfulness with faith without faithfulness is dead look at somebody next to you and say neighbor faithfulness without faith and faith without faithfulness is dead what are you saying brother preacher this woman is a daughter of faith but she was also faithful how do you know that this woman who is a daughter of faith who is bound by Satan is faithful because the Bible said that Jesus was in the synagogue teaching, but we find this woman with a spirit of infirmity bowed together at church. Good God Almighty, I wish I had a witness in here. Isn't it amazing that when we look at this text, find this woman in somebody else's mind that has a excuse to be at the rehab center, have an excuse to be at home and say, I can't make it to the synagogue today because I have a condition. But because she had faith, she was faithful and she still kept showing up. Can I pause right there to tell somebody, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the enemy brings against you, what you may have experienced. Just keep on showing up. I need you to look at somebody and say, keep showing up. In other words, faithfulness has to do with consistency. Keep on showing up. Keep on serving. I may not be able to do it like everybody else does it, but I'm going to keep showing up. I may not have what you have. I may not drive what you drive. I may not look how you look. I may not be able to sing like you sing. I may not be able to preach like you preach, but I'm going to keep showing up. And the reason why you need to keep showing up because one of those days that you show up just may be your day. The Bible says this woman is bound by Satan and she is bowed together. Notice that the Bible does say that she is bent over but she is bowed together. There's a difference between being bent over and bowed together. To be bowed together suggests to me that this woman was an upside down you. She could not lift her eyes up. She could not lift up her head. The bones in her back had fused together and now she has a condition on her that have caused her to have this infirmity. She's faithful. She has faith but she's bowed together. How many people in the house of God can be honest at times that you have faith and faithfulness but things are not like you would have them be like you want them to be and people don't understand why you keep showing up with your condition but what they don't understand is that your commitment is not based upon your condition your, your commitment is based upon who 
God is. He said, be faithful unto death and I will give you a crown of life. Some of us want to serve God upon condition. But when you serve God based upon condition, you serve him based upon his performance and not because of who he is. But you got to shift in your life like David was that said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I wonder, do I have anybody in this place can open up your mouth and say, I will bless the Lord at all times, good times and bad times, happy times and sad times. I will bless the Lord. I need somebody to clap your hand and say, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I'm going to bless him when I have a pocket full of money. I'm going to bless him when things are thin. I'm going to bless him when I have support. I'm going to bless him when I don't have the support. I'm going to keep showing up and keep doing even when it seems like it's going well. But when things get low, God said, can I trust you to trust me when things are messed up? Can I trust you to keep on showing up? Can I trust you to keep praising me when things seem like they are bad? Can I trust you? This woman was at church anyway, bowed together with the spirit on her. I believe that she had been coming to church consistently, not knowing what to expect. But on this day that Jesus was in the synagogue, teaching in the middle of his teaching, he notices this woman. Not only does he notice the spirit on her, he notices her condition. But not only does he notice the spirit on her, her condition, but he also sees her faith. He also sees her faithfulness. And he stops the whole service. He stops his teaching. And check this out. Now this is the part that really blesses me. The Bible does not say that the woman got in the prayer line asking for prayer to stand up straight. The Bible does not say that she sent up a prayer request on a piece of paper. She didn't, the Bible doesn't say that she sent somebody to tap Jesus to say, Jesus, can you work a miracle for me? But notice that she's just in the house. She's just in the room. And Jesus sees her and check this out. She gets something that she did not ask for because she's in the right place at the right time. Can I drop a word of prophecy in this place on today? That there are some people that God is getting ready to release some things to you that you prayed for. That you petitioned for. But God said not only am I about to give you what you prayed for and what you petitioned him for. But God said I'm getting ready to give you something that you didn't ask for. As a matter of fact you've been serving him not with your hand out but with your hands up. And God said because you had your hand up and not out. God said I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. It's is there anybody here can stand a blessing, a miracle, a breakthrough, a shift, a turnaround, and you didn't even ask for it? You know, that's why sometimes I'm challenged when I see people jealous of what God is doing for somebody else. Because the reality is that some of us, we have what we have because of the grace of the Lord. As a matter of fact, you didn't even ask for what you have. You didn't even ask for the, the position that you have. You didn't even ask for where you are. And if we really be real, some of us, if we could, we'll give it back to him. Because we found out not only do we know the blessing of a thing, we also know the burden of a thing. And when you just focus on the blessing of a thing and don't understand the weight and the burden, when the burden gets heavy, you find yourself quitting and walking away. But this woman bowed together and the Lord saw her. And not only did he see her, but he had compassion on her. She was in the right place at the right time. But notice what Jesus says to her. He stops his teaching and looks at her and say, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Now this is interesting to me. Again, because when we look at Jesus dealing with unclean spirits and other texts, the Bible said that Jesus would speak to the demons. He would literally say, hold your peace and come out. But this woman who had a spirit of infirmity, hallelujah, the, Luke does not record him saying anything to the spirit. 
But he says something to the woman. Good God Almighty. He says, woman, thou art loose. He didn't say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. He didn't say loose her and let her go. He didn't say hold your peace and come off of her. But the Bible said he speaks to the woman and not the spirit. Watch this. He said, woman, you are free from this infirmity of being bowed together. Number one, that suggests to me that Jesus had already done the work. Watch this. Because she was in the presence, in the environment that was conducive for her to get straight. I wish I had a witness here. And not only that, but Jesus then reveals to us the power of the individual's faith to believe once you hear the word that that ought to cause a reaction in you. Now why is that important? because when you look at the next verse the Bible says yes he says you are loose from your infirmity watch this bishop she's still bowed together but she's loose she's free but she's still bowed together she's delivered but she's still bowed together isn't it amazing that a word can be spoken over your life and you're still acting like you were before the word was spoken here it is. Jesus said, you're free. You're loose from your infirmity. But she's still bowed together. How many people God has spoken a word over your life and you still acting bound? I don't know if you ever heard this song they used to sing when I was growing up. The Lord delivered me. Why should I be bound? So why am I still talking and acting like a victim? Why am I still talking and acting like I'm broke, busted, and disgusted when Jesus has already spoken a word over my life? And watch what happens next. The Bible said that Jesus doesn't give up on the woman, but then the Bible says that Jesus laid his hands on her. Good God Almighty. Not only will the Lord have compassion on you, but he will touch you. The Bible said that he laid hands on her. The spirit was off of her. The spirit that had her bound was off of her. But then Jesus lays his hands on her. And the Bible said immediately. I feel an immediate anointing in this house right now. Anybody believe that God can do it immediately? As a matter of fact, I feel a suddenly anointing, an immediate anointing. I know you're waiting for tonight. I know you're trying to wait till you get home. But God says immediately. You can never stay the same when the Lord lays his hand on you. The Bible said that he lays hands on her. Bowed together. The spirit is off of her, but she's still in the same position. Notice that when Jesus lays hands on her, somebody shout immediately. Oh my God, when, when is God going to do it for you immediately? So, when I'm waiting till the Congress is over, no, God says, I have an immediate blessing for you. I have an immediate miracle for you. The Bible said immediately she was made straight. God Almighty. She was, she was bowed together, but when the Lord touched her, the Bible says she was straight. And I love what then what Luke says she did next. Not only did she get straight, but she glorified God. I come and tell somebody whenever God does something for you, you've got to be careful that you don't take the blessing and the breakthrough and the miracle and run away with it. But you need to give God the glory. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, give God the glory. Notice that the woman was made straight right in that service. And if she could testify, she would testify and tell us today that it was 18 years that I was bound by this spirit. 18 years I stayed faithful to God. 18 years I stayed faithful to the synagogue. 18 years I exercised faith. But things that did not get better. But when I got in the presence of Jesus and Jesus spoke a word over me and then touched me, things are straight now. And that's what I came to tell somebody that God, he's getting ready to straighten some things out. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, tell them God's getting ready to straighten some things out. I know it's been crooked. I know it's been rough. I know it's been tough. And the enemy told you it can't get any better. But the 
devil is a liar I see the hand of Jesus manifesting in this place on your life and that which was crooked is about to be made straight I need somebody to open up your mouth and say straight straight I'm straight now I know that the enemy told you that things couldn't get better he tried to show you your death and your defeat he tried to show you how all the things that have happened to you have been for your destruction but one way or another the Bible says that the Lord will straighten things out for his people for we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose and I came all the way from Memphis Tennessee to tell somebody get ready get ready God is about to straighten some things up in your life I need you to get out of your seat and tell three people I'm straight now I'm straight now I'm straight now the devil don't like it but I'm straight now yes and when you think about the term I'm straight what does that mean that means I'm good look at somebody say I'm straight and I'm good what the enemy meant for evil God he's going to use it for my good wipe the tears from your eyes hold your head up for I serve a risen savior and he's able to make things straight you may have to cry every now and then but weeping may endure for a night but joy I said joy hand clapping joy foot stomping joy soul stirring joy it's coming in the morning I got to quit I got to let you go but we've been through a season of lack of quality health we've been through a season of pandemic and viruses and we've had some losses of loved ones we have some losses in our economy we have some losses in the church but God told me to tell the people of God to hang in there things about to shift things about to get better and I'm gonna make it straight and what you thought that you lost God said I'm gonna restore you and I'm gonna give it back with interest and if you believe that God is gonna give it back with interest don't wait don't wait till the battle is over but shout right now if you know it's straight I need you to shout if you know restoration is coming to your house it's coming to your church I need you to shout shout until the glory fall shout until things work out I see your health getting straight I see your money getting straight I see your marriage getting straight I see your tuition is straight now the devil don't like it but too late devil it's all it's already straight I got to quit but tell somebody one last time it's already straight yes I know it looks like I'm still bound together but the spirit that had me bound is already gone and I'm free and all I need is just one touch all I need is just one touch is there anybody here want the Lord to touch you I tell you to lift your hand throw your head back and say Lord one touch will make it all right 
One touch will make it straight. One touch will turn up a whole shot. We'll turn it around. One touch will fix it. All I need. All I need is one touch. And if you get the touch, you got to forget those things which are behind you and reach. I dare you to start reaching for those things which are before you. I press toward the mark, toward the prize of a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, the next time you look for me, you got to look up because I, I, I'm getting ready. Hey, I'm getting ready to go higher. I got to bid you farewell. But is there anybody that want to go higher in the words of the hymn? Lift me up. Let me stand by faith on heaven's table and a higher plane than I have found. Lord, 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 plant my feet on higher ground. Be like that old deacon. Be like that church mother and jump on your feet and say higher, 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 higher. I want to go higher. I need to go higher. I'm looking to go higher. Wrap back and shout higher. Uh, oh, I want to go higher. Hey, hey, hey. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I want to go higher. I, I want to go higher The devil don't like it But I'm straight now Because I'm higher I haven't seen You haven't heard Neither have it entered In the heart of those Who love the Lord The things that God has prepared For them that love him But the spirit Reveal it And cool JC I see something. I see you in the future. And you look, you dress, you drive, you walk, you shout, you sing, you preach much better than you do right now. If you believe that you're straight, you're higher, you're better, I need you to shout. I need you to leap. I need you to dance. I need you to shake your head, rub your belly, let the devil know I'm straight. I'm straight now. Things are straight now. By the time you get home, straight. By the time you get back to your church, straight. By the time you get back to the classroom, straight. By the time you get the next doctor report, straight. Look at somebody say straight. I'm straight now. I wish I had 10 people in the room, somebody online to start dancing, to start leaping, because you're straight. I dare you to get out of your seat, get off the couch, pull over on the side of the road, and shout, I'm straight. Oh, 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 I'm straight, I'm straight. Yes, the devil don't like it, but when you're straight, you don't wait on somebody else to start dancing, but just draw the line and say I'm straight. I need everybody to take your finger like this. Come on. 
and we're going to prophetically dance in this place and we're going to draw a straight line let the devil know that every crooked place today is about to be made straight now some of you may need some room if you're in the room here at home make you some room wherever you are but when I count to three I want you to draw the line and when you're dancing with it, I just want you to shout, I'm straight now. I'm straight now. My children are straight. My body is straight. My money is straight. My mind is straight. Y'all got it? Y'all ready? One. Woo. Come on, get some room. Get some room. Two. Here we go. Three. Yes, 
Come on and praise us. Come on, take that energy to your vocal cords and wrap back and shout straight. While you're praising him in this house, he's going to your house. By the time you get the next week, by the time that you get the next month, God said it will be straight. Oh Lord. Oh. Come on, lift those hands, lift those hands. Lift those hands and pray them. Come on out of your belly. I see God here. I see help here. I see hope in the room. I see healing here. I see deliverance. God said, I'm trying to straighten you. I'm trying to make it straight. I'm trying to number hosha. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Lift those hands up all over this room. Things are straight now. That song that the minstrels ministered a few moments ago was right on time. It will work out for the good of them who love the Lord. What does that mean? He's going to make it straight. Hallelujah. If you believe that, give God a wave offering. I don't know who in this room needed to hear this word and who's watching online. But I want you to know that it is not by happenstance that you are here, that you are here virtually or in person. You may have some crooked seasons and situations in your life but today immediately immediately the Lord has made things straight anybody believe that really believe that you you're not just here because of the conference but you came expecting God you needed God to straighten some things out for you and he's doing it right now there are people who are watching online perhaps you need prayer. You want somebody to touch and agree with you with what you're experiencing in your life. There are prayer counselors and intercessors who are standing by right now ready to minister to you. Literally real-time prayer with individuals who are consecrated and sold out to God. They're standing by to pray with you and pray for you and pray you through so that you can be straight. I want you to call right now that number you see it on the screen 718 715 0404 718 715 0404 listen when you call call with expectation call with faith and i believe hallelujah by the time you get off of that phone things will be straight in the name of Jesus, it is so, it is done by faith. I dare you to trust God. Those of you who are in this room, God has already done it. I don't really have to pray another prayer. All we can do is just lift our hands and say, thank you. Oh, come on, open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Now, I'm getting ready to move on, but... I found out that people that really need something from God or needed something from God, their praise is a little different from somebody that just goes through the motions. And I wonder, is there anybody that's not just going through the motions, but you really needed God to turn some things around for you and you believe that he straightened it out. I need you to lift your hand right now and throw your head back and just tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's done in Jesus' name. Listen, I am so excited about this season and what God is doing in his kingdom. I'm glad we, I believe, on the tail end of this pandemic, God is bringing us through and he's bringing us out in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to clap your hands for that. It's been a strange, crooked season, 
but God is straightening this season out for his people. And that's why we're here. We, 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 we didn't shut down. We just adjusted, adapted, and adjusted. And here we are today serving the Lord in a virtual setting and giving God glory. I want to celebrate the Congress president and the presiders of this tremendous Congress and this tremendous church that said, Satan, you're not going to stop us. We like that woman. We may be bowed together, but we're here. We like Miss Seeley on the color purple. I may be black. I may be ugly, but thank God I'm here. Anybody glad you're still here? We made it. We survived. And because of that, we exercise faith and we are faithful, not only in worship, but also in giving. Many of you who have been faithful and supporting this work, do not in any ways allow this conference to not receive and experience what you would have sown into it had you been here. Because there's great expense and great things that are happening in this conference. Our president and the team has not taken back and taken a back seat, but look like they've taken things to another level. And I don't know about you, anytime I see something great like this happening, I want to sow into it. I want to sow into it. There are at least 30 people between persons in this room and watching online. I want to challenge you to join me in sowing a seed of $100. $100. You don't have to be ashamed. I don't have time to go into a litany about giving, sowing, and reaping. But I found out, I will say this, anybody that have a bad attitude and spirit about money never has it. But when you change your perspective about giving and money, you watch the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow manifest in your life. I need between those here in this room and online to join me in sowing a seed of $100. I sowed a seed earlier using Cash App. You can do the same thing right now. You see it on the screen, you can sow at Cool JC IC. Cool JC IC. And you'll see that uh, image come up and you'll be able to sow just like that. There may be other ways to give. You can see that on the screen PayPal, paypal.me forward slash I Congress. Or you can mail in your gift and your seed to International Congress at P.O. Box 976 in Garner, North Carolina, 27529. Make that check out to International Cool JC. I need at least 30 people between those who are in the room and watching online to give. Thank you. You can also give via Givelify. Let's sow today. There are at least 30 people that can give that $100 seed. I'm getting my seed in my hand. I see several people who are joining us online. I need some people to acknowledge that you're giving. I need you to acknowledge that you're giving that $100 seed. You're joining in by faith. Those of you in the room, you can give me a cash, check, or credit card. We have persons who are here to serve you. Now, if you don't have the 100, we're not here to put anybody on the spot, but I want you to trust God today. It may be 75, it may be 50, it may be 25, but I need you to stand all over this room. As a matter of fact, you ought to be standing and giving and saying, my money is straight now. Hallelujah. I know that there's some people in this room need the Lord to straighten their money out. Amen. I know when you go to the bank, you can't go and put a wad of money balled up and deposit it. You have to straighten the money out. And I suspect you wouldn't want anybody to put a balled up money in your hand. You want it to be straight. Today, the Lord is straightening out your finances. If you dare to trust him. Thank you. I see those who are in the room who are giving. Those who are online. Thank you so much for those who are sharing. Listen, if you don't have that 100, the closest and the best that you have, I want you to trust God with the stand right now all over the room. Those who are online, I need you to start giving. You see the ways to give right there at the bottom of the screen. Let's let Cool JC Congress know that we're standing with them. We believe that everything will be straight at the end of this conference. We believe that our lives will be straight at the end of this conference. We will be the better because of it. Stand all over this room, whatever seed, whatever amount that you have. Lift your hands up. Lift your phones up if you're using that. Those of you online, if you have a way of raising your hand or acknowledging your faith in God in this moment, this is a God moment, I want you to lift your hand right now. Give God a wave offering. Hallelujah. Things are straight now. Glory to Jesus. 
things are straight now. Father, I thank you for this experience. Thank you for this Congress that you have brought us together to experience your glory. We thank you for every word, every fellowship, every workshop, every empowerment. We see this Congress as indeed good ground. We thank you for the labor of those, the vision of those who have gathered around the table to strategize, to see what can be done, that persons be drawn closer to you. And God, so we respond in faith and by faith and so into this work, into this ministry. And God, I don't have to ask you to do anything. You've already promised that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings we won't have room enough to receive. You promise that if we give, it shall be given back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give into our bosom. We thank you for increase, outpour, overflow, and great favor upon every person under the sound of my voice. For all things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own do we give unto you. In Jesus' name, somebody shout, my money is straight now. Oh, come on, say it like you believe in. My money is straight now. Now, if you're giving and you're sowing in this room, I want you to step out from where you are and come to this altar. You can sow it on the altar. Those who are online, you can give online. I need you to just step out from where you are. Even if you gave me your phone, I want you to walk by the basket. Hallelujah. Let's just celebrate our Lord and celebrate what he's done. Celebrate that things are straight now. Online, I need you to give. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless these minstrels, these singers giving and sowing, these men and women of God, these who support the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I love about God. My God and his people, we don't only serve, but we sow. We sow and we serve as unto the Lord. If you have a debit or credit card, you can see those officials here to my left and all of those who will share. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's give our great God a great big hand clap of praise for all that he has done. Pray for me, I'll pray for you. And we're going to watch God change things. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for the ministry gift of Bishop Linwood Dillard. Come on, can we put our hands together for the man of God? Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm straight now. I said, look at somebody and say, I'm straight now. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Very quickly, we're going to transition. Amen. I want to make uh, two brief announcements. Uh, our future leaders are gathering again today via Zoom. Amen. So those of you that are watching online, I need a favor. I need you to go to uh, info.coojc.org amen and register for that zoom link I want you to register for that zoom link amen I'm, I, I want to get the participation up it's Saturday amen it's 2.30 uh, the, 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 um, uh, the future leaders are gathering on zoom at 2.30 amen I need some more future leaders online amen our sister Kimberly Clark and our sister Zenobia Dooley have been doing a, an amazing job Amen. And uh, listen, the Congress is about our young people. Amen. And so we need to get our young people, amen, involved and engaged. This is the last day of our Congress. Amen. And we don't want to leave you out. So do me a favor. Go online, register, get the Zoom link at 2.30. From 2.30 to 3.45, the future leaders will be meeting. Amen. And they have a wonderful program scheduled for you. Also at 2.30, amen, our, in our international uh, Armor Bearers and Young People's Union, our ABYPU, has a workshop, amen, from 2.30 to 3.30, developing a Christian worldview. Ah, glory to God. This is going to be good, amen. Uh, teen pregnancy, y'all ain't saying nothing. Single parent and still safe. I thought this was a youth conference. Can we celebrate our international ABYPU department? Y'all too quiet. I need some hand emojis in the comments. Can we celebrate our international ABYPU department? Amen. They didn't just think of this yesterday. Amen. They put some thought, amen, and some, some prayer into, amen, uh, uh, their direction for their workshops. And we want you to be a part of what's going on in our international church. So I need you to tune in. If you're not a part of the future leaders, I need you online, amen, with our international ABYPU. Can we do that? Come on. Can we do that? Can we do that? 
All right, amen. Let us all stand. Listen, if you are a man in this house, amen, if you are a preacher, if you are a brother, amen, we have a good man of God that's here, amen, and he has a bunch of ties in the back, amen. Uh, go ahead and invest in yourself and get you a nice tie, amen. If you are a wife in here, let's stand. Come on, let's stand. I'm talking, let's stand. I'm about to do a prayer transition. If you are a wife and you want your husband to look good, go back there and get him a tie, amen. It's going to bless your life, I guarantee it, amen. Let's stand. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. The president is telling me he sent me something. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, one more thing. At 4 o'clock. Somebody say 4 o'clock. So after the ABYPU's workshop, you're going to be on that. Amen. After Future Leaders at 4 o'clock. Amen. We have uh, the talk. Amen. It is going to be hosted. Amen. By our sister Kelly Thomas. Glory to God. Amen. And we have our lady Vanessa Thompson, our lady Lysandra Rose, our sister Stacia Davis, sister Tracy Moore, missionary Brenda Young, and sister Natasha James will be on that panel. Amen. At four o'clock. We need you to tune in. All right. At four o'clock. Amen. So we have a full day plan. We're still in conference, y'all. We're not here to rest. Amen. We're still in conference and we need you to be a part of what we got going on. Amen. So listen, I want you to share this. I want you to like it. It's already on our media pages. Set yourself an alarm clock a reminder to tune in amen to those amen events let's pray father in jesus name we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard we pray now god that you will bless us as we go from this place oh god but never from your presence keep us covered under your blood in jesus name we pray amen god bless you we'll see you in a few minutes